The real value of collaboration between industry, academia and the NHS is bringing together the best knowledge in each individual discipline that's necessary to progress a technology towards clinical adoption. So by bringing together different parties with different insights, different awareness and different specialisms around the table from the earliest stage possible in the innovation process means that you're really bringing to bear uh, the best of that knowledge in the right way to address some of the global healthcare challenges. Having worked for the best part of 25 years at the academic industrial interface, I've got lots of positive examples of the value of engagement between academia and industry and the secret is early academic industrial engagement and what you're trying to avoid is the possibility that an academic with an idea might be doing something that industry might have developed 10 years ago, that there might be a different way of doing it or the holy grail that we're all after is for that early academic industrial engagement to result in a partnership that leads to a way forward that couldn't have happened without that interaction. I strongly believe that one common ground is first of all building a collaboration based on the fact that you acknowledge differences. So from the beginning you really need to realise that the way we do innovation and the way our performance is measured is different then you need to have strong champions in each and every uh, player. These are the people that can really foster a strong relationship that usually is what brings a project really long term uh, to a successful send out. The largest barriers to knowledge exchange and translation of research are really those of understanding. You know, not everybody has been engaged with that kind of activity. And often the things you have to do to be successful in that are very, very different to what you've been doing in your previous research environment. For me, much more important are cultural differences. So we still have, at the interface between industry and academia, uh, an approach where industry often comes in a transactional manner where we're looking for, we're talking about assets or we're talking about a preclinical model. And academia sees us as a source of funding and there's a, there's a transactional nature of an engagement. Um, that really does not give justice to the different needs and the different motivations and desires that researchers have, the needs that a commercial company has. So uh, cultural differences for me are often seen as sort of uh, soft issues, but I think they are real barriers to joint understanding. So as a result, you have different expectations, lack of understanding, and actually that can get in the way. It doesn't always get in the way, but it does mean that we have to do, to get over that, a lot of education, and in, in a sense of helping people understand why things are done, because we're working with very clever people who are definitely keen to see their, their work translated. If as an academic you want to do translation and you want to see your discoveries move forward for the betterment of mankind, then you're going to have to work with industry at some point, either by creating your own industry, industry by creating a spin-out company, but even then, you're, that's likely to be acquired by a, a larger player in the, in the sort of uh, uh, pharmacological, uh, pharmaceuticals market. So you know, if you if you want to really see impact of your discovery science through to patient benefit, you're going to have to collaborate with industry. So the sooner you get over all of any preconceptions that you have and just get on board and, and, and do that and start talking to colleagues in industry, the better. And you'll find you'll have a very, very good conversation with them. They have different constraints and different red lines. And so once you understand them, and I think acknowledge them right up at the beginning, I often think if you can leave your ego at the door, come into the meeting, storm it, pick the ego up and then go out, that's the best way to make progress. So if you don't involve patients and perhaps policy makers, right? uh, groups that are, don't have much vested, direct vested interest in the way of profit, for instance, of market share, I think we're missing that kind of focus to bring all the partners together and try to bring the best elements from each one of these, which already exist, to be brought together and create something that is much bigger than the sum of its parts. The UK Spine Consortium, as it, as it is at the moment, it's, it's, it's five partners, I, I call it a coalition of the willing, people who are prepared to come and put on the table the assets they've got, which will enable us to go from innovative discoveries through to clinical proof of concept. 
but it's not an exclusive club and it, and, and it's, it needs to be uh, work with whatever partners are necessary to get the, the job done.